So I wanted to share with you the uh, latest project which I actually have completed and that is uh, Geiger counter. So I bought a uh, surplus Geiger tube on eBay for pretty cheap from it was built in the Soviet Union and uh, now they're being sold out of Ukraine. It was about five bucks and uh, I assembled it using a printer power supply box which is what I believe this was. Um, I extracted the components from a scrap printer and decided to use this box. So it is uh, powered by three volts and yes I know this is a nine volt battery connector but I'm using this battery here so it's a holder takes two double A's and yeah, you get just over three volts on that 3.2 volts when the batteries are full. Anyway that connects up here that's also why you have the polarity reversed because uh, the what appears to be negative cap on the holder is actually the positive and, and vice versa. And then we have a, uh, of course, switch to turn it on and off. And this is the actual Geiger tube. Now this is an SI-3BG Geiger tube. Again, it's Soviet surplus. It's uh, quite insensitive. It, it really, it's not very sensitive. It, it doesn't pick up very well. Because of that, um, the audio coming out of it is not much. So if I put something radioactive next to it, you will hear clicks. But there won't be very many clicks. And the background is almost nothing. You'll hear one every maybe a minute or so. Now, because of that, using a speaker was relatively difficult, so I ended up using a 3.5mm headphone jack, which fit perfectly in this uh, ground wire hole that came with the power supply. And uh, so what that, what I used for that was just a 3.5mm headphone jack holder that I salvaged out of actually a $1 FM radio set I got at a dollar store. I was pretty surprised to find that, to be honest, but... Uh, yeah, I've, I've had that around for a while, and I just decided I'm not really using it, and I can probably get another one, so why not just uh, salvage it? And then, of course, it has a power indicator. So, uh, I can't really show you what it sounds like, because I don't have a speaker that works properly. Again, it was too quiet when I used a speaker, but with a headset, it's great. So, uh, yeah, I'll take it apart and get this back. So here's the inside of the device. I have the outer cover. Hi. And uh, here it is. So I've actually used quite a bit of salvaged parts in this. So uh, Here we have the headphone jack connector, which you can see around the front. There's a switch on and off. Salvaged this from a uh, garden light I had. Here we have the SI-3BG Geiger tube. It's quite small. It's like the cheapest one you can get on eBay. I've heard good things about the SBM20 as well, which I might try, but it does have polarity, so I have the positive of the high voltage marked here. And then we have the power connector. Now, it's quite crude. As you can see, it's ridiculous amounts of hot glue. That took me a while to glue together, actually, get it all to fit. Um, and it's a quite simple circuit, but it does work. And I'll show the schematic after this. So here we have a, a power supply. So that takes in the three volts from the connector and it feeds it into a disposable camera flash circuit that I modified. Now, the original purpose of this is to power the xenon tube, which is right here, this guy. I don't need a xenon tube, but I can use the high voltage. Now, this requires high voltage the xenon tube, so what it originally does is it steps up the 1.5, 1.6 volts from a AAA battery, or of course AA battery, to around uh, 300 volts on the output terminals. Now in the in the standard version, it's going to have a large uh, storage capacitor. I actually have a broken flash circuit right here to show you, so here it is. Uh, I somehow managed to damage it, but we have the large capacitor here. And you can even see the kind of burning there on the capacitor terminals, and that's because I've shorted it a few times now. It stores a lot of energy, and it's 300 volts. So you don't want to touch one of those, It'll, it won't hurt you, you'll just get a shock and it'll be uncomfortable, but it creates quite a large flash, and uh, that is dumped into the xenon tube. Now, what I've done is simply taken off the capacitor and mechanically clamped the connection down here, which is the switch where the disposable camera would have given you, and then I soldered two output wires, so positive and negative. We don't need the negative, I have that glued away somewhere in here and clipped off. But the positive wire, when you apply 3 volts instead of 1.5 volts, is going to produce just under 600 volts on the output. And uh, that's really useful for just a small and cheap circuit, which is going to run you five to ten bucks for just buying a camera. Or I've heard ten years ago you could at least find them for free at stores. I don't know if that happens anymore. I haven't found a place to do that at. But anyway, 
600 volts goes directly into the Geiger tube at the positive input terminal right here. What that does, the Geiger tube has infinite resistance, um, but if ionizing radiation, like this will detect beta and gamma and x-ray, of course, no alpha because of the shield, if that happens, if one of those hits the inside, it will ionize the gas and you get conduction across the tube. Now what I have here is it's connected to a, a uh, 2N222 transistor, which is right here, and it's connected to the base, the center pin of the transistor, which goes to the, uh, the Geiger tube. What that does is, if you get a pulse across the Geiger tube, it will essentially turn on the transistor and allow current to flow through the other two. What I have there is directly from the power supply wired through the headphone jack. So essentially, yeah, it's a very simple circuit. What you have is a power supply, and when you get struck by ionizing radiation, three volt pulse goes through the headphone jack and to ground, which is grounded to the case, and you get a pulse of sound. And that'll work with a speaker, with a light. Those were quiet and dim, so I used a headphone jack because when you're wearing the headphones, it's quite easy to hear. You can use anything. This is a very cheap one. I think came with the FM radio at the dollar store. I have some better ones and also my main headset, which all of those work very well. And of course, just some insulation. The uh, high voltage is very, very covered in glue, but that's just to make sure it doesn't short. And it's grounded, of course, the case. So uh, that's the operation, and I'll show you the schematic shortly. So here's the schematic for the circuit. Again, it's extremely simple. Um, I wanted to make it as simple as possible so that I didn't have to buy too many parts. So again, we have our surplus Geiger tube, five bucks on eBay. That's the symbol right there. Here's our flash circuit, and here's a three volt power supply. Now you can, it draws about 100 milliamps constant with 300 milliwatts. I'm not sure how happy I'm about that number, but for now it'll work. And uh, so you can use anything capable of supplying that. Uh, I use batteries. I'm going to try a supercapacitor later and uh, charge it with maybe solar panels. That might be interesting. Anyway, here's a switch into the flash circuit. Positive output of 600 volts right there. And then through the Geiger tube. When the Geiger tube, of course, energizes again, goes to the base of the 2N2222 transistor, and current can flow from the battery through the output and back to ground. So, uh, I got the idea to use the transistor online. I was originally just doing it directly again to make it as stupidly simple as possible. But that was very quiet. This was better. And again, you can use anything here that gives an indication. I had some good success with a blue LED and a salvage TV speaker, but again, I wanted something that would be easy to use without holding your face or ear up to the device. So this is better. You can use a cable with the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And uh, just a reminder before I finish up, if you do attempt to replicate this or some similar circuit, just remember to take all precautions when working with high voltage. This is 600 volts, that will shock you. This circuit isn't going to be particularly lethal, but you do not want to be touching high voltage. You want to be taking all safety precautions. So if you're working on a live circuit, just remember to use gloves if it's on. You really shouldn't be touching it if it's on in the first place. Discharge all capacitors, for example, even after you take off the bulk storage. This little guy, the green one, is still a live capacitor and it will discharge over time, but if you work on it immediately after, you'll get a little zap if you don't discharge that. So don't do this unless you know how to work with high voltage. Um, and yeah, be safe. Because Geiger tubes do require pretty, pretty high voltages compared to something like three volts like this. And that's, uh, that's about it for this project. I think next thing I'm going to do is try to build another type of nuclear battery. I want to get americium to work, americium 241 to be precise. Uh, I've had a tiny bit of success but it's a little far from what I could call a battery at this point so I need to finish that up, figure out how to get it working. I have no idea how long that will take and the other thing I kind of want to do is um, some x-ray production and actually power something with my tritium battery I built before in the previous video um, other than just flashing a light. I might try a fan with that. Anyway, um, thanks for watching.